Late last year, I took an unexpected three-day road trip across Antarctica to return a lost cable. <laughs> I know this sounds ridiculous. Let's visualize this. To start with, I want you to imagine Antarctica. Think of the most remote, desolate place you've ever been in your life. Now take out all the trees, any buildings, any sound apart from the sound of your own breath and the wind. Now imagine that, but really cold. <laughs> That's Antarctica. So I was in Antarctica working on a seismic survey. The plan was we would drill a big hole through an ice shelf all the way down to the ocean, drop this huge electrode down the hole, run thousands of volts of current through it, make a huge bang, and then sound waves would go ricocheting off in all directions. We could calculate the speed of sound through ice in different directions, and that would tell us about the way the ice was flowing. Sounds simple, right? <laughs> Problem number one. We didn't have a plane. So the weather was bad, which meant the plane couldn't land, which meant the pilot wouldn't fly, which meant that we were stuck at a base 300 kilometers away from where we needed to be. Think about the last time you had a plane delayed in an airport. You're sitting in their weird, uncomfortable seats in the departure lounge. You, you're stressed, but you're also kind of bored as well. You're flicking through the Da Vinci Code because it's the only thing they have in the bookshop. <laughs> Our plane was delayed for two entire weeks. It's, it's a lot of Da Vinci Code. <laughs> Problem number two. We had colleagues out on the ice shelf. They had drilled the hole. They had the electrode. They had all the processing equipment. They had everything they needed to do our analysis for us, apart from one single cable. Have you ever left your phone charger behind in a hotel room and just been really annoyed with yourself? <laughs> so it was like that, but colder and somehow worse. <laughs> so there we were, stuck in an Antarctic base, without the plane that we wanted to be there, but with a cable that we didn't want to be there. Have you ever had a plane delayed for so long that we were like, you know, honestly, I could just drive in this time? <laughs> That's exactly what we did. So we packed all of our stuff into this huge snowmobile, including the world's most precious cable. Put that in there. We jumped in. We started driving. 300 kilometers. It's about the distance from here to Christchurch. It took us three days. <laughs> Think about those road trips your parents used to take you on as a kid. You know, they'd stick you in the back of the car and it's exciting, right? Because you're going somewhere new, but after about half an hour, it's like... Mom, I'm bored. Why are we driving 10 kilometers an hour? So it was like that, but we were actually driving 10 kilometers an hour. <laughs> it's not that easy to drive on snow. So we did that for three days. And you're probably thinking, you know, these scientists, such commitment. I bet they were welcomed with open arms, tears of joy. Well, I regret to inform you that uh, they'd actually found another cable and done the analysis with that one. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine this. You're on your way home from uni. Your flatmate texts you, you really need milk. You make a special trip to the supermarket. And the lines are really long, but you make a special effort because you really want Cocoa Pops. <laughs> and you get home with your milk. It turns out they were just looking at the wrong shelf of the fridge. There was milk there all along, and they ate your Cocoa Pops. <laughs> but it's kind of OK, because now you have heaps of seismic data. <laughs> if you can imagine that, you can imagine a little bit of the chaos that is Antarctic fieldwork. And I've got to tell you, I absolutely love it. <laughs> That's me. <laughs>